Good morning. I'm Valerie Hartwood, Chair of Delaware Commission of Veterans Affairs. On behalf of the DCVA, welcome to today's ceremony. Veterans Day is set aside to honor our service members and veterans, to remember the sacrifices they have made and the courage it took to defend our freedom. This year marked the 70th year since the Korean Armistice Agreement and 50th year since the Paris Peace Accords. About half of all veterans alive currently were impacted by at least one of those two events. I want to also say thank you to their family members who have sacrificed and supported our veterans during their service. I want to send a special recognition out to our Gold Star families and remembering their loved ones. Thank you for being here today. Lastly, I would like to make a special mention about our DCVA commissioners. All of our commissioners are veterans and dedicated their time to helping veterans and providing resources to veterans in need. I am proud to say I am a veteran. After separating active duty, I joined the Delaware National Guard. I am still, cur still currently serving with 26 years total service time. Years ago, as an Airman Basic, <laughs> I rose to the ranks to Mass Sergeant as a major in the Delaware National Guard. It was only 75 years ago, President Truman signed into law the Women's Armed Services Integration Act, which allowed for the first time women to serve as regular members of the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Corps. Women in the US military today can serve in combat roles, become Army Rangers, fighter pilots, and four-star generals. The full integration of women has made our military stronger and has reinforced the power of unity. Anytime I'm working on base or deployed, I'm not looking at someone's gender, but as an equal who signed up to serve their country, the United States of America. Veterans, thank you for your service. Let us begin the day with a moment of silence to remember the service members who gave their all for their country. Please rise for the presentation of colors by the Delaware National Guard, Joint Honor Guard, and our national anthem sung by Army Staff Sergeant Tracy Thomas. present the colors. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rattling. was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, that was beautiful. 
please remain standing for the invocation by Chaplain Andrew Warner. Let us pray. Almighty, you are the author of life, and you give us the desire to seek justice in this world. The quest for justice often puts nations at odds with each other. We understand we are flawed as people, and we ask that you give our leadership guidance and wisdom in this pursuit. Regrettably, war is a part of human life. We uphold the good when we're engaged in it. We are here to honor our veterans that have served and continue to serve today. And we lift us for Paul Phillips as he's in hospice. May we also remember and honor the families that strain a military life. Generation after generation, they preserve our liberty. We honor their service today. Almighty, we invite you to meet us here. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Warner. Please be seated. At this time, we would like to recognize our distinguished guest in the audience, the Honorable John Carney, Governor. The Honorable Lieutenant Governor Bethany Hall Long has a representative, Matt Doherty. The Honorable Tom Copper, unable to attend today, sends his well wishes. U.S. The Honorable Chris Coons, U.S. Senator. The Honorable Lisa Blunt Rochester, U.S. Representative. Secretary of State Jeff Bullock. Representing Attorney General Kathy Jennings' office, Elmer Setting. State Treasurer, Colleen Davis. Representing Insurance Commissioner, Trinidad Navarro. He's unable to attend today. He sends his well wishes. State Auditor, Lydia York. Major General, Michael Berry. Dover Air Force Base Wing Commander, Colonel William McDonald. <laughs> Speaker of the Delaware House of Representatives, Valerie Longhurst. <laughs> President, President Pro Tempor of the Delaware State Senate, David Sokola. <laughs> Senate Chair of the Veterans Affairs Committee, Senator Nicole Poor. House Chair of the Veterans Affairs Committee, Namadi excuse me, Chibocha. Appreciate it. <laughs> Representative Franklin Cook. <laughs> Members of the Delaware House of Representatives. Newcastle County Executive Matt Meyer. <laughs> Wilmington VA Medical Center Associate Director Kim Butler. <laughs> Executive Director of the Delaware River and Bay Authority Tom Cook. <laughs> Former State Senator Nancy Cook. Commissioners of the Delaware Commission of Veterans Affairs. I would like to give special mention to our former chair, Anna Lopez. She has done so much for us. I just want to give her a hand. Please give her a hand. Valerie took over as chair, and I, I'm, my shoulders are a little more free. <laughs> Did you mention Governor Carney? Governor Carney? Yes. Uh, Yes, of course, he was the first one. Sorry. Okay, no worries. Oh, I also want to mention our new vice chair, Nolan Lewis. Okay. 
members of the Delaware Office of Veterans Services, uh, Mayor of the City of Dover, Robin Christensen. <laughs> Mayor of the City of Newcastle, Valerie Leary. <laughs> Former Representative Earl Jakes. <laughs> Gold Star Families and Gold Star Mothers. We also want to give recognition to our military leaders, veteran service organizations, and family members and veterans. We are now honored to receive our opening remarks. Please welcome our governor, the Honorable John Carney. Morning. I don't know about all you, but I'm a little confused. I've been coming to this event for nearly 25 years, and I usually sit right over there. <laughs> and the Commission on Veterans Affairs sits right over here. And the Gold Star families, they sit right there in the front row. I'm a creature of habit, and I'm really confused. But what I'm not Our thanks and appreciation for their service. I was also a, a, really a special thing. I was also greeted by Troop and Pack 125, the boys. thank the commission, Valerie, and everybody that worked so hard in the state government uh, on behalf of veterans, Secretary Bullock and, and his team, the work that we do, and the General Assembly for their work. I do want to point out what, or to mention one member of the General Assembly who is a veteran herself, Representative Carrie Evelyn Harris uh, from Dover. <laughs> Carrie, thank you for your service. I also want to obviously recognize our congressional delegation, short one today, Senator Carper, who I don't think has ever missed one of these events, and so I'm not sure what's, I hope he's well. He's well, that's, uh, that's good. And thank you to, to represent Blunt Rochester and Senator Coons for the work they do on our behalf with all things of veterans in uh, Washington, D.C., particularly their efforts on behalf of the VA Medical Center here and the Medical Center team that's here. Thank you for your great service. As you know, the National Guard has come up big over the last couple years. General Berry was introduced. I didn't hear enough applause for General Berry and the National Guard, men and women. And just uh, General Berry, so you don't get too excited about that. How about, uh, let's have a shout out for our beloved General Frank Vavala, who's here. General, General Vavala has a very special detail today. He's got Ray Fermati, 102 years old, with us today. World War II veterans. Ray, it's great to have you, and General Vavala, thanks for all you do to, to bring here Ray here and uh, to help us celebrate his, his service. Last weekend, I know many of you here recognized the 40th anniversary of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Wilmington. Unfortunately, I was traveling and un unable to attend, and very disappointed that I couldn't be there. Many of you know that the memorial it's just a couple blocks from my house on 19th Street, and I pass it often when walking in the park. And for those of you who've seen the statue, you know that it's really a powerful symbol. And every time I walk by it, it stops me in my tracks. 
It depicts one soldier carrying the limp body of another soldier on the battlefield. The image evokes strong emotions, and so do the names listed on that memorial, Delawareans who've made the ultimate sacrifice. Many of those names are names that, that I recognize, including the brother of John Flaherty, who I know is with us this morning. Each of the, those names is a young person whose life was cut short it's a sober reminder of the sacrifice of 122 Delaware service members who paid the ultimate price while serving in Vietnam. Thousands more served. According to the most recent estimates, there are 25,000 Vietnam veterans still living in Delaware. And more than 50 years since the end of the war. It's important that we capture the stories of their service and sacrifice the same as we've already done for the generation of Americans who served the country in World War II. Veterans like many who have joined us here this morning, veterans we know like Major General Retired Frank Iani, who earned the Combat Infantry Badge and Silver Star for his service in Vietnam, and Brigadier General Retired Terry Wiley, who also earned the Combat Infantry Badge and Purple Heart for wounds he suffered in the war. You always count on General Wiley and his presence at this event, and he is here with us today. General Wiley, please stand. And he is in his assigned seat this morning. And veterans, who's a tireless advocate for Delaware's veteran community, especially in Kent County. Joe served in the 25th Infantry Division of the Army until December of 1970 when he suffered serious injuries. He too was awarded the Purple Heart for his service. And veterans like Jim Dolan. Jim was a star football player. The older we get, the better we used to be, Jim. And graduate of the old Brown Tech High School in Wilmington. In Vietnam, he served with the 1st Marine Division. He was trained in demolition and search and destroy operation. Jim received the first of his two Purple Hearts after being wounded by shrapnel clearing tunnels near Da Nang. The explosion killed a South Vietnamese soldier assigned to his platoon. I know Jim is here today. Jim, let us show our appreciation for your service. There are an endless number of individual stories of Delawareans who served in Vietnam, stories that we should capture for posterity every day, not just on days like today. As we know, our Vietnam veterans were not treated with the respect they deserve when they returned home. And so as we commemorate 50 years, more than 50 years since the end of the Vietnam War, we can honor those veterans and their service today by collecting and retelling their stories, and then those stories will not be lost to history. As governor, it's a great privilege for me to serve as Commander-in-Chief of the Delaware National Guard. It's been a busy several years for the Guard, as I said a few minutes ago. Just last week, General Berry was in Texas to welcome home members of the 160th Engineer Company. That unit had been serving in the Middle East, in Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar. It was the largest overseas deployment of Delaware National Guard in recent years. 155 soldiers were part of the unit, including 129 on their first deployment, and six guardsmen and women who were serving their third tour of duty. Significantly, 44 of these soldiers volunteered to transfer into the unit to participate in this operation. That tells you all you need to know about our guardsmen and women and their commitment to serve. They are always ready to answer the call. Members of that unit include Sergeant Zachary Fackler, a Delaware farmer who was the lead non-commissioned officer for the team responsible for the number one project of the mission. And Specialist Julia Valcarcel, who led a team of soldiers operating a 50-ton 
Ukraine that supported the work of her unit and many other units operating in the region. Altogether, the soldiers of the 160th earned 19 meritorious service medals, 120 Army Commendation Medals, and 15 Army Achievement Medals. I would say that that deserves a round of applause for our appreciation. As we all know, this is a very turbulent time in the Middle East with the war between Israel and Hamas entering its second month. Our guardsmen and women, they don't ask for any public recognition, but during their deployment, members of the 160th have completed important projects for the U.S. Department of State. That included deployments to support lodging and support facilities for refugees throughout the region. I'm told that that's all I can tell you about their mission, but I can't think of a more important work than in during these difficult times. Members of the unit are still preparing to come back to Delaware, but I think we have some members of their family who are here in the audience, and I would ask them to stand and be recognized so we can thank you for the service of your loved ones. And so I, I just want to close by thanking all of you for coming today, the veterans who are with us for your incredible service, those of you who helped me and others to remember the stories of those who've served our country, people like John Riley and General Vavala. I appreciate uh, your help. We appreciate all your service and sacrifice, and we will continue to honor that service by telling these stories and retelling these stories so they're not lost to history. Thank you all for coming today. God bless you and may God bless America. Thank you, Governor. Please welcome Senator Chris Coons for a Veterans Day message. The good news is at 11 o'clock, we will stop and be silent. So you know you have no more than five minutes for me to make these remarks. To the Chair Valerie Harwood, thank you. Um, to everyone who's on the Veterans Commission, thank you. Could we give them a round of applause for their terrific service to our state and our state veterans community? To Staff Sergeant Tracy Thomas for beginning with a stirring rendition of our national anthem. Thank you, Sergeant. Always beautiful. And to Chaplain Werner, thank you for reminding us that it is the search for justice that initially sends out our veterans into the world, those who have served and are serving, and that war is a part of human existence, a tragic and difficult and demanding and dangerous part of human existence. And we gather here today to thank and recognize those who serve, those who have served, those who support them in their service, and those who grieve their service. Could we give a special round of applause to our Gold Star mothers and to the families of our veterans who supported our National Guard? Thank you for who you are and for what you've done for our nation. Like our governor, I earnestly hope we will see our Gold Star mothers here next year because I too am confused by the reorganization of everything here today. To Ray Fermani, Thank you for being with us, and thank you for having been the Delawarean who most lifts our eyes to the skies as we remember your service in the Second World War on the behalf of our community and our nation. And you know, there are two Generals Barry. There is Adjutant General Barry, and there is one-star General Karen Berry, who is on the verge of retiring after how many years of service, General? 37 years, but who's counting? Could we give a raucous round of applause for the Generals, Berry? They're not quite at General Vavala levels. Not quite, but in combination, the Generals, Berry, might someday approach Adjutant General Vavala. 
And to my colleague and dear friend, Senator Tom Carper, who is the last Vietnam veteran in the United States Senate, I hope you'll give him a round of applause that he'll be able to hear from the distance at which he's currently serving. I lift up my eyes under the hills. From whence will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. This piece of the 121st Psalm is a reminder of those around the world who in desperate and difficult situations lift up their eyes and say, where will my help come from? And yes, in all ways, ultimately help comes from our Lord, but it comes through the people who take up that task and challenge. There are many here who are parts of veteran service organizations without whom we would forget those critical stories our governor was talking about, without whom we wouldn't have the advocacy for veterans and their care, without whom we wouldn't have this memorial, without whom we wouldn't have this day. So could you give a round of applause to all who serve in veteran service organizations and who advocate for them tirelessly in Washington and in Dover? I'm a co-sponsor of 12 different bills advancing the needs and the interests and the concerns of veterans. And I'd like to say I would have thought of some of them or sponsored some of them on my own, but honestly, without veteran service organizations who meet with my staff like Kate Rohr, who come to my office in Dover and Wilmington, and in particular in Washington, we never would have passed the PACT Act. In the last Congress, we passed the single greatest expansion of veterans' benefits in American history, and it happened because of veteran service organizations and their advocacy. <laughs> Yesterday at Dell Tech, I had a chance to meet a Marine, a veteran of Afghanistan um, and of Guantanamo Bay, who is now, uh, he has a 100% disability benefit. And he described to me in detail how a decade ago, it would have taken him a decade of pushing and fighting and fighting and pushing, of hiring advocates, of getting special analysis, of getting, and maybe he would have gotten to disability. Now it is automatic. It is expensive, but it is the very least our veterans deserve. And it is the single biggest step forward we've made in my now 13 years in the Senate. Let me conclude with a brief reflection on two things. First, three weeks ago today, I woke up in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, flew to Tel Aviv and spent eight hours meeting with the leadership of the Israeli government and military and went to bed in Cairo. I was traveling with 10 senators, five Republicans and five Democrats. And if you had had the chance to be with us in any of our meetings, our meetings with the families of American hostages held by Hamas, our meetings with the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia and his Minister of Defense, our meetings with the Israeli military, our meetings with the American military, you would not have been able to tell the difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. As we pause to reflect on those who have served, let us recommit ourselves to a path forward where all of us are equally committed to our veterans, regardless of politics or background, and all of us support the service of the men and women in the armed forces. Thank you very much. Thank you for the chance to represent you. And thank you for the blessing of this reflection today. Perfect timing. Down to the second. It is now the 11th hour on the 11th day of the 11th month. Please join me in a moment of silence commemorating the end of World War I. Thank you. Let's welcome our next guest speaker, Congresswoman Lisa Blunt Rochester.
Good morning. I have to say, this is the best good morning that I've heard. We haven't had to repeat it. You have just been um, incredible. And I want to um, start off um, by, first of all, acknowledging all of the families, the veterans, those who made this day possible. But one thing that I know that Senator Coons wanted to do and did not get a chance to do in his remarks um, and that I would like to pick up the mantle and do is recognize that um, in our state, we have an incredible Delaware National Guard. Incredible Delaware National Guard. <laughs> General Barry. But we also know that leadership matters. And today, I want to also salute our commander in chief, John Carney, who has dealt with some of the most turbulent times in our state and in our country and in our world, leading our Delaware National Guard. Please give a round of applause for his leadership, John Carney. A protocol having been established and all of the names having been called in honor of our elected officials, our families, our commanders, um, Tom Cook, even I'm going to give a special shout out to Tom Cook, um, and all the distinguished guests and families. Um, as was stated, Senator Carper cannot be with us today. And as you all know, there is nothing that would keep him away from this ceremony, uh, except his wife's family is having a family reunion in Wilmington, North Carolina. So he is where he should be with his family. But I also uh, feel that it is important that we acknowledge his service and sacrifice to this country and to our state. So give it up for Senator Tom Cooper. And lastly, as I mentioned, veterans and the families and the service members, we are here to honor you. And I, I looked at the program and on the front it says, Honoring local heroes. Honoring local heroes. That's really what today is about. It's honoring those local heroes. And I really appreciated the governor talking about sharing the stories and keeping the stories alive. There are more than 68,000 veterans who call Delaware home. 68,000. Because every one of them play a part and are our local heroes, we all have to do our part. So that's my message today. We got to do our part. In the halls of Congress, that's what Senator Coons talked about, us passing legislation that will make your lives better, that will put into action what we say is in our hearts, supporting our veterans, like the PAC Act. We know that there were many veterans that were exposed to toxic chemicals, and for many years suffered economically and even mentally from the stress. So the PAC Act was a bipartisan victory for this country, but more importantly for our veterans and our families. It's also about our work helping constituents every day. Krista Weep in my office is the person who gets to do that every single day with love and compassion, who has a mother who worked at the VA hospital for how many years? 32 years. Thank you, Krista, for your work with our veterans. And as the, as the governor said, we get to hear the stories of folks who reach out to us for everything from medals that have been lost to benefits that they need and deserved. That's part of us doing our part in Congress. Then there are the incredible folks that put this event on every year. And they also need to be recognized because we know that it is keeping this event alive that's important. The Commission of Veterans Affairs, the Delaware Office of Veterans Services, and the Delaware River and Bay Authority. I salute you. And I thank you for saluting our Gold Star mothers and families. I see this mother right here, whose son today would have been his birthday. 
It would have been Brian's birthday. And she said he was a soldier born on a soldier's day to be a soldier. We thank you for your service. She's wearing white today. Beautiful, beautiful white all up and down. And I said, Brian is having a heavenly birthday today. And we are here and we salute all of the Gold Star families. And we thank you so much for your service to our country as well and your sacrifice. Happy birthday, Brian. But I want to close with this. I think all of us have a role to play that Veterans Day is not just one day. It's 365 days of the year. Yes, I see you shaking your head. We already had church with, with, with Senator Coons. But I see you shaking your heads. It's 365 days a year. And one of the things that really impressed upon me in this Veterans Day is that there are a lot of local heroes and family members that we don't even listen to their stories or hear their stories. This year, I found a picture of my grandfather. I never even talked about my own family who have been military, in the military, my uncles who served in Vietnam and who were in the army, my uncle on my dad's side who was in the Air Force, but even my grandfather who was in the Navy at a very challenging time in our country. And I thought about the fact that some of you may know, Sam Latham and others that, you know, you know in, in black houses, you got like a couple of photos in your house. You had, you had Jesus, you had Martin Luther King, maybe if one of the Kennedys, and you had your family members, your uncles and your grandfathers. But sometimes we don't know their stories. And so all of these people always write into my office. And for the first time, I asked Krista, can I get one of those privacy forms so I can find out my grandfather's story? We got to tell the story, salute their work, and salute their efforts, and know that each and every one of us has a part to play in making sure that we put our action with our heart. Thank you for your service. Thank you so much. God bless. And God bless America. Thank you so much. Leaders, thank you for recognizing our veterans and for your continued support for our veterans. I have the pleasure of introducing our keynote speaker, Senior Master Sergeant Retired Francisco Rendon, is a veteran with over 40 years of Air Force service, active duty, guard, and reserves, and 34 concurrent years of civil service. He and his family are uniquely familiar with what sacrifices must be made as service members frequently depart and reintegrate to their communities. Please welcome Senior Master Sergeant Retired, Francisco Redom. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for having me here today. It is an honor to speak to you all. I would like to start this morning by thanking all those among us, despite the risk and sacrifice, raised their hand and swore to serve and defend this country. Veterans Day is an important holiday to be celebrated each year because it allows us to honor and commemorate the men and women who serve in the military. These soldiers serve in times of peace and war, protecting the safety and security of citizens of our state, our country, and around the world. We're here today to honor every one of you. Your blood, your tears, your time away from home, your sacrifices will never be forgotten. Today, I would like to share my love of country and duty through some of my experience while serving active duty in the Air Force, Air Force Reserve, and Air National Guard. I had the distinct pleasure of serving our country for a total of 40 years. My service story begins not long after I graduated from Gardner High School, Gardner, Massachusetts in 1972. 
That fall, I received notification I was drafted into the U.S. Army. Prior to receiving my draft notification letter, I registered at the University of Massachusetts, Amherst University, and was accepted in the Air Force ROTC program. I had dreams of becoming a U.S. Air Force fire pilot. After being notified of my draft selection, I attempted to get a student deferment without any success. My dream was set aside, and so I, and I decided the next best thing was to join the Air Force and aim high. I made my way to the Armed Forces Recruiting Station at Times Square, New York City, and signed up as a volunteer to join the U.S. Air Force. My first assignment was at Travis Air Force Base in California with the 60 Military Airlift Wing, 60 Field Maintenance Squadron as an aircraft mechanic. Known as the Gateway to the Pacific, operations are trying to support Air Mobility Command Global Mission. One of the more mem memorable operations my unit supported was Operation Homecoming. It was an effort to bring Vietnam prisoners of war home. I had the opportunity to serve the, the opportunity to see the arrival of a group of soldiers. It was unforgettable experience seeing them one by one as they exit the aircraft. I can envision their expression, their joy, their tears as they were reunited with their families. The sense of pride we felt as a unit, having done our part to contribute to the overall success of the mission was overwhelming. It was then that I began to realize that although I was not fulfilling my dreams of becoming a U.S fire pilot, the work I was doing was changing lives. In 1975, I chose to take advantage of the pilot chase program, which allowed me to transition into the Air Force Reserve. This enabled me to continue with my career with the Air Force while pursuing other goals and interests. I was assigned to the McGuire Air Force Base in New Jersey, which was close to home family in New York City. While serving on the reserve within the 514 Air Mobility Wing, 514 Organization Maintenance Squadron, I progressed from Air Mobility class to Senior Master Sergeant. This is where I spent most of my military career. Over those 30 years, I had the opportunity to work alongside many dedicated airmen and eventually grew into a role where I was training, coaching, and mentoring young men and women. I had the distinct pleasure of being the section supervisor of a young staff sergeant who I realized had potential and aspirations. While we worked together, I supported his growth and development within the squadron. Given his work experience outside the reserve, I encouraged him to apply for the Discernment Airman Commissioning Program. This program enables eligible enlisted members who demonstrate outstanding leadership abilities to fill vacant positions within the wing. Oh. This program enables eligible enlisted members who demonstrate outstanding leadership abilities to fill vacant position grades captain through major within the wing. Selection is an honor reserved for the most qualified, motivated, and deserving individuals. Unfortunately, due to a C-17 restructure, I transitioned to the 108th Wing New Jersey Air National Guard before these plans materialized. A few years passed, and by chance, I crossed paths with this airman on base. I saw him with the gold oak leaf rank insignia of a major on his, on his U.S. Air Force service dress uniform. I saluted, we embraced, and took a few minutes to catch up. I was so happy and excited to see that he had followed through with my advice and realized his full potential. Impacting the lives of many airmen like the one above has been a rewarding experience for me. I transitioned from the reserve into the Air National Guard in 2005. By this time, my family relocated to Dover, Delaware from New York. 
I served in the one way maintenance group quality assurance. I joined Bess, McGuire, Dix, Lakers in New Jersey until I retired in 2012. As a senior NCO, non-commissioned officer, I feel it was my duty and responsibility to be part of the 108th Wing Senior NCO Council, to foster the military traditions, customs and currencies, and promote the morale and welfare of the wing. In an effort to improve the morale and welfare of the unit, as well as remind every American of the proud heritage we have, the council decided to organize a military ball for the first time in perhaps a decade. I was tasked with leading the committee. Let me tell you, throwing a good military party is not an easy feat. There were more than 250 people in attendance. We had an Irish, a Scottish bagpiper, a U.S. Air Force jazz band ensemble, and even a DJ performing throughout the night to keep everyone entertained. The sense of unity and camaraderie between all the different squadrons within the wing was felt by all. It was a great moment of exaltation for the hard work of every senior NCO and the support of many chiefs around the wing. It is moments like this that I cherish and miss most about the military service, the opportunities to work as a team and the joy of realizing the fruits of your labor. My experience of lo and longevity in the U.S. Air Force was due not only to my own desire to serve, but also because of the support system I had at home and I work the U.S. Postal Service. I was surrounded by people who understood the requirements of my duty as a citizen airman and allowed me to go away for periods of time in support of many military contingencies and operations, such as there's a shield, there's a storm, and noble legal. For that, I am very grateful. America is a great nation because a hero like all of you, past and present, People who put the nation's best interests above self-interest, who put patriotism, love for country above profit, and who put love for community and country above love for oneself. We as veterans walk different roads, but we all have faced hard challenges and have made many sacrifices. Yet, we have proven well-equipped and trained to meet those challenges and expectations. Our veterans come from across America, representing the diversity and character of our great nation. And our military is so stronger because of it. So as we thank those who serve our veterans, let us also thank our heroes on the home front. We could not carry our duties without the critical support of our families, mother, fathers, wives, husbands, and children. The reporting has never been easy. Our strength as a nation comes from citizens like yourself in the audience today. Americans were aware of the challenges, aware of the danger we face every single day, aware that freedom is not free. It is veterans like you who have made this country great. I'm proud to be an American. I'm proud to be a veteran. And I'm proud to call you all family. May God bless our troops, may God, may God bless our beautiful state of Delaware, and may God bless the United States of America, which has always been and forever be the land of the free and home of the brave. Thank you very much. Thank you, Senior Master Sergeant Rendon. Staff Sergeant Tracy Thomas will now lead us in God Bless America. Please stand if able. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her. And guide her through the night with the light from above, from the mountains to the 
prairies to the ocean wide with foam. God bless America, my home sweet home. God bless America, my home sweet home. That was beautiful, thank you. Please take your seats. We will now transition to the wreath tribute. As I read the names of the organizations, please stand, if able, and salute the wreath symbolizing our veterans. Gold Star Family, Delaware Chapter. Gold Star Mothers of America, Incorporated. Air Force Sergeants Association. American XPOWs, Delaware Chapter 1, Incorporated. American Legion and Auxiliary, Department of Delaware. American Veterans. Americans of Polish Descent Cultural Society. Association of the U.S. Army, Delaware Chapter. Colonial Pluralized Veterans of America. Delaware Commission of Veterans Affairs. Delaware Military Heritage and Education Foundation, Incorporated. Delaware National Guard. Daughters of the American Revolution. Delaware Patriot Guard. Delaware Society, Daughters of the American Revolution. Let me have that. Delaware Society, Sons of the American Revolution. Delaware Veterans Incorporated. Department of Veterans Affairs Medical Center. Disabled American Veterans and Auxiliary, Department of Delaware. Dover Air Force Base. First State Military Women Warriors. Fleet Reserve Association. Heroes Welcome. Jewish War Veterans, Department of Delaware. Korean War Veterans Association of Delaware. Marine Corps League and Auxiliary, Department of Delaware. Military Officers Association of America. Military or Order of the Cootie and Auxiliary, Brand of Delaware. Military Order of the Purple Heart. Military Order of the World Wars. National Association of Black Veterans, Delaware Chapter. Pilgrim Baptist Church, Veterans Ministry. Purple Heart Riders. Silent Service Motorcycle Club. Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War. 
the Reserve Officers Association of Delaware, the U.S. War Dogs Association Incorporated, the United States Marine Corps with Marine Corps Reserve Center, the United States Navy with Navy Operations and Support Center, the United States Coast Guard. United States Navy Cruiser Sailors Association, United States Submarine Veterans Incorporated, Veterans of Foreign Wars and Auxiliary Department of Delaware, Vietnam Veterans of America, Delaware. Vietnam Veterans Motor Motorcycle Club. Warrant Officers Association, First State Chapter. If your organization was not called and you wish to honor our veterans, please stand or raise your hand and salute the symbol. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll make sure we get those added to our list for next year. Ms. Mao, would you please come forward to provide closing remarks? I just want to say, um, this is Miranda Mao. She's our acting director for the Office of Veterans Services. She helped coordinate this with the Dela Delaware River and Bay Authority. I just want to give them one round of applause real quick. That was a lot of work going into this. So having the acting title is a deeply humbling experience sometimes. Like when you make decisions that everyone, <laughs> everyone is confused about. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, let me explain why though. So, I think it's important to look at the reasons for our traditions and our habits. I'm fourth generation enlisted, so it's a big deal in our family, like we honor things, we have traditions. When we started this ceremony, we didn't have a gold star memorial. Now we do. So when I made a seating chart, it was important to me to put the gold star families as close as possible to their memorial. And if we're moving them, we move the commission so that they can be together, which means everything flips around. <laughs> but in retrospect, probably could have explained that to people a little better. We learn things all the time. Um, this is a big deal for veterans in general, right? We like to honor our fallen, and that's very, very important. But today is also for the living, right? It's for those of us who are still here, figuring out how and why we're still here, being part of our communities. What I would challenge all of us to do today when we leave here and get out of these suits or whatever the case, is to go home and call your friends. Call the people that you serve with and talk not just about the sad things and the people who are gone, right? But the dumb things, the basic training stories and the boredom and the dirty jokes and the pranks, right? Laugh about it because that's how we keep breathing, right? That's how we stay above ground. Um, and then you set a reminder on your phone for a week from now and you do it again and you do it again and you do it again because that's how we keep community with each other. That's it, nothing else clearer than that, just an underlying message. Call your battles, check on your friends. Thank you all for coming out here, it means so much.
that you would sit here in the cold <laughs> and honor this with us today. Please rise for the 21 gun salute and taps. Honor guard post. Before we close, you may be seated. Before we close, I did want to thank um, Governor Carney, Senator Coons, and Congressman Elise Blount Rochester. They mentioned the PACT Act in their speech, but it gives, which gives our veterans um, who weren't eligible before health care with the VA. But I also want to mention the Compact Act. If you know a veteran in crisis who is suicidal, they can go to any medical center and ask for help, and the VA will cover the cost. That's under the Compact Act, which ties into the governor's challenge, which is a great thing the um, Lieutenant Governor's Office is heading up. Um, that team is looking at what's called Ask the Question, and they're working with the Bridge Center. So any veteran who needs that help, Lieutenant Governor's Office, the governor's challenge, working with the VA, we're all coming up with a plan and putting it in place, because one veteran's life is one too many, okay? I want to conclude today's ceremony. Thank you. Thank you.